of our atal FTP on HPC and its application. Today's speaker, we have Dr. Devi Mahalakshmi Ma from Netco College. So, uh, welcome, ma'am, to our FTP. So, now, um, uh, Dr. Sri Devi Ma'am will give a brief introduction about us. Good morning, one and all present here. I'm very glad to introduce Dr. S. Devi Mahalakshmi Ma'am. Department of Computer Science Professor from Nepco Shalank, uh, Shivakasi. She has done her MA from Anna University, PhD from Anna University, passed out 2018. Research interests include machine vision, image forensics, IoT, and data science. She has 28 plus years of experience in the teaching field. She has uh, three plus patents to her credit including the early <coughs> prediction of endometrial cancer by analyzing risk factors using Internet of Things and Deep Learning, an automated screening system for cervical interepithelial uh, cervix from the pap smear, an intelligent shopping cart for tracking products using IoT. She has more than nine SAI journals to her credit, seven plus Scopus journals and nine plus Q1 journals. Her book publications include Advances in Intelligence Systems and Computing, Springer Proceedings, as well as book chapter including Advances in Automation, Signal Processing, Instrumentation, Control Secured Healthcare Monitoring System. She is a proud member of CSI and ISTE. Warm welcome to you, ma'am. Thank you. So, uh, thanks to ma'am for accepting our invitation to be an uh, guest speaker for the day. So now I uh, invite uh, our HOD, Dr. S. Prasna Devi ma'am to present a memento. Now I hand over the session to our speaker, Dr. Devi So yesterday you might have started with the MPA programming. Have you run any of the program? So, we might have covered up to the MPI unit function, MPI finalized. Uh, have you seen MPI send receive? No, ma'am. The communication and all is not yet started. She just should go to the program and So, actually, MPI programming is uh, meant for. Uh, distributed computing, distributed environment. So, the, suppose the uh, end process, they are going to interact with each other. Here we are using some kind of message passing mechanism. So we have done thread uh, communication, thread uh, using thread, number of threads. Uh, and, uh, so, you might have created the process and display the count, uh, rank yeah, of the process. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's what we are going to see now. For MPI send and receive, which is a blocking point to point communication. Then it is now the recent version of MPI. We have non blocking communication. And some collective communication where group of process they are going to interact with each other. Here also, nowadays, they have introduced non blocking communication. So the topic we are going to cover will be major topic is. Blocking and non-blocking communication, point-to-point -point and collective communication. And we see some of the example topics, right? So as I already have seen, it is a purely message passing mechanism. So a library which includes all those facilities. 
for point to point communication and uh, collective communication right and uh, suppose if have two process we are going to interact with each other through some apis we are going to send the message right and here we can include this uh, apis mpa apis either in c programming or fortran or c++ uh, in your high level language code itself we can include wherever needed we can include the message passing apis so that only that particular part of the code alone uh, will be run in parallel and the interaction among the process will be done so that's what i might have already learned we have to include the corresponding header file then we have to initialize the environment uh, to work with the mpi programming then we are going to include the apis where we do the message passing across process then finally how to terminate that one right and here every mpi function we start with the mpi underscore capital letter mpi underscore then the corresponding api name and the first letter must be the capital letter like uh, mpi send s might be the upper case character right that uh, format is being used then in fortran programming we are going to follow this format mpi then mpi underscore followed by all the characters are upper case characters mpi send mpi receive so for fortran and c programming there may be a, a slight variation in um, mpi api calls so here we have to include mpi f dot header file for c programming we have to include mpi dot h right that program that is what you have done and what is the communicator word communicator word so you might have used this term mpa communicator word so it is a group of process that is uh, in that particular context in that particular application or in that particular context for all the process we are going to interact with each other the set of process created for that specific purpose now it is like a group name so by default we are going to provide mpi communicator world or else if you want you can provide your own labels right when we go for a higher uh, level applications where we can split the group into two category uh, some of the uh, members some of the process they are going to do one specific kind of task then we can group uh, create a sub group then for that particular sub group we can provide a label right but by default we are using this communicator name so it is symbolic name so that's why we are using capital letters the name as such right so the first one is to get the current process rank which is one id assigned to every process when it is being executed then the second one is what is the number of process involved in the communicator group right so by default you are using this one and in uh, later versions of mpi they have provision to provide Uh, to create sub groups then to provide our own labels for a group label so that only those process uh, that belongs to that particular group they can interact with each other right so process rank you know which is equivalent to your id thread id or process id and compilation command you know how to compile the code again c programming and in fortran right so by providing the execution command you are going to say how many process to be created so every main suppose you are writing a c program then every main function will act as a process so we have to say how many process we are going to create then those many process will be created all are going to execute the same main function so it is the duty of the programmer we have to uh, separate 
which part of the task to be done by process 0 and process 1 because every process they run the same main function so the programmer we have to separate the uh, task to be done by process 0 process 1 uh, for that we are using the rank of the process we are verifying i am whether process uh, with rank 0 then do this particular kind of task like that we have to separate the work to be assigned or a uh, task to be performed by every process will it in the automatically done ma'am actually no, based no. on the task uh, so in uh, open mp it will be done automatically in open mp it will be done automatically here explicitly we have to write the code as like our fork system call uh, when you use the fork the child process will be created we ourselves we have to specify what are the part to be done by the parent and what are the things to be done by the child so like that we have to separate the uh, region to be done by process 0 process 1 right so actually uh, in the uh, parallel programming approach it is the first one introduced mpi i mean mpi programming is the first one introduced which is something like a lower level where uh, many of the things to be done by the user the programmer then it was extended to open mp so actually mpi is the first one where they try to do the communication among process then it was extended with open mp where there are lot of facilities the, the system itself will take care of all the parallelization and all those things right so in point to point communication blocking and non blocking communication similarly for collective communication we are going to see these things right so collective communication for data movement and collective communication to do some kind of computational work then your uh, communication uh, synchronization there is one uh, only one system api which will synchronize the process barrier api right and this one you know so in process A, we are going to execute send. In process B, we are going to execute the receive. There might be the corresponding matching. Right? It is point-to-point -point communication means proper matching must be there. So at the sender side, we have to specify who is the receiver. What is the rank of the receiver? And at the receiver side, we have to specify who is going to send the data. So there might be a proper matching between the two process in case of point to point uh, blocking communication right and again it is synchronous so both the sender and receiver must be ready to complete the process otherwise if the receiver is not ready then sender is going to wait so it, he is going to block uh, similarly if the sender is not yet ready then receiver is executing the mpi receive function at that particular point itself the receiver process is waiting so inherent weight is there in blocking APIs. So the first one we will see blocking kind of send and receive. So these are all the parameters we are going to pass for send function. The first one is the buffer area where we are going to keep the message. So it might be any type. So that's why it is taken as void star. So you can pass integer or string any type of data. And followed by how many uh, elements you are going to process. So if it is characters, how many characters you are going to pass. If it is integer, how many integers you are going to pass. That is the count. Then followed by uh, what type of data type you are going to communicate. That is, uh, it is um, some of the data types will be supported by the uh, MPI programming. So here we have to specify what is the MPI data type we are going to pass, right? Then destination process rank. Is there any so, difference between normal data type and MPI data type? Yes sir, the, for a C data type, the corresponding MPI data type name is there. For integer, for characters, <coughs> that uh, list is also available. So only those data types will be supported. What is the corresponding data type name to be used? So for a C signed integer, you have to use MPA underscore INT. Right? 
at the time of communication, the data is typecast to MPA type. So it is something like uh, we are adding some wrapper kind of things. Then we are passing the data. So to make the send and receive, they communicate with the same format data, formatted data. So for every C programming type, the corresponding MPA type is there. Similarly, for Fortran data type, uh, character, integer, double precision type, we have the corresponding MPA data types. So, if you are going to send the data of type character in Fortran program, we have to use this MPA underscore character. Right? So, the data type, then the integer. A destination process rank that parameter is in the, uh, integer rank of the uh, so that is destination process who is going to receive then tag the tag will be something like uh, suppose the same set of uh, process 1 and 2 they are going to communicate or process A and B in process A there are a few uh, send function and the corresponding receive will be executed by the receiver process so now there must be proper matching the first send function must be matched to the first receive in the sender receiver side so at that time the tag number will be useful if you have multiple send and multiple receive the communication is for the same pair process a and b then the first send must be matched with the first receive. At that time, we use uh, different numbers like uh, maybe first message uh, 1 or second message 2. And the same tag number must be used at the receiver side. The same number, right? So, it will be useful when you are going for uh, multiple send and multiple receive between two pair of process. Otherwise, you can simply ignore the tag or else we can leave it as zero right then the communicator word um, what is the name of the group so similarly in receiver side we have the same buff, uh, content <coughs> buffer count the data type then here we have to specify i am receiving from which source that is is that integer is number or how we are identifying the destination and source? Rank, process rank, usually it is treated as integer. Process rank, your uh, MPA communicator rank function will retrieve the rank of the process. So that number usually integer. That number usually, suppose we are creating four process. It is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, suppose you are creating eight process means it is 0 to 7. Right? So, that number we have to specify. Then the tag. So, the same tag must be present at the sender side and receiver side. It is also an integer number. Any number you can have. Then the communicator num. And additionally, we have another field status. It is predefined structure. MPA status is predefined structure. Uh, sometimes, uh, suppose the receiver is receiving the message without knowing the sender information. So at that point, we can go for this uh, status field and all. Right? Suppose the receiver is receiving the message from a particular sender without knowing the sender. Maybe uh, more than one sender trying to communicate. And he is receiving from one particular sender. At that time, the matching will not be there. Sender side rank and receiver side rank so in that case this mpa status field will be useful to get uh, from whom i am receiving the message from which process i am receiving that uh, message currently right so that is the additional field available in the receiver side only anyway the source will tell where the message is coming from. Uh, maybe all the source um, Four sources are there. All the sources they will say, I am going to send the message to destination 1.
so using the status field we will can know who is the source and sometimes the receiver may not know what is the size of the data received uh, that also um, can be derived from the status field right Now one example, we are creating a message uh, with a message following here. Then I am taking process uh, source rank as 1 and destination rank as 0. Then buffer size may be a number of characters so we can take it as 32. Then at the sender side we are passing that message which is uh, actually in C programming it is pointer. So we pass that uh, message name of the array as such right then buffer size followed by we are passing character type of data so we have to specify what is the mpa type name so mpa underscore character then destination i am going to say zero so here the destination number will be zero then tag you can use any number maybe zero and zero can be used both at the sender side and receiver side then the communicator word name. Similarly, the receiver side, we have the message, then buffer size, data type. Now the source will be here 1, then the tag and uh, status. Right? Now we have two copy of the same main function. In one is process 0, another one is process 1. In process 0, we have the character array message. In process 1 also we have the character array message. So it is like a private variable or local variable for the process. In both the main function we have the same array. But in process 0 it is private member for that process. In process 1 it is private member for the particular process. So that's why we can use the same name. Right? Both at the sender side code and the receiver side code. Then the destination and source will match the two send and receive. But our code is such that we have to uh, write the single main function. Inside the main function, uh, we test whether my rank is 0. Then I am going to execute who is source 1. So here MPI send must be executed by source process ID 1. So the MPI send must be executed by process with rank 1, right? Uh, that is the source process. Process with rank 1 has to execute MPI send. Uh, meanwhile, pro uh, destination process ID is 0, rank is 0. So the process with rank 0 has to execute MPI receive, right? How much? Status what is you know? A status field which is predefined structure. So if you are going to use the status field, then we have to define one variable of this predefined structure. MPA underscore status which is uh, defined in MPA dot H. So you have to create one variable of that particular data type. Otherwise you can leave it as a null pointer. Here we need one um, pointer variable. So you can have it as uh, null, right? But what are the status is there now? Status fields. These things you also.
Doctor, ma'am, I have taken MPI sent and received. So that uh, code is not included in my PPT. So here, one message was created. And these functions and all, you know, MPI init and getting the rank, getting no, the communicator uh, size. We didn't talk. Yesterday, we didn't communicator, this function. Yeah. MPA communicator MPA, size. You, you are only starting today. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yes. 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 MPA communicator size, first name of the group. Second parameter is the one integer uh, pointer we are going to use. So the second parameter will receive how many process have been created in that particular context. In the particular uh, context or in the particular application. When you run the application, you say that count process number. So now it will get that particular information in this second variable. So in this variable, the size of the communicator group, how many process have been created, that will be stored. Then this another function, communicator rank, here in the second variable, the current process rank will be stored. We are running this command in all 8 process, suppose you are creating 8 process. In all 8 process, that function will be executed. But in process 0, the number assigned is 0. This parameter will receive 0. In process 1, it will receive, in this variable, it will receive 1. Right? So, we cannot know what is the current process. So, to get the current process rank, we have to use this MPA communicator rank function. So, inside the function, it is being executed. So, if the current process is uh, the process 1, then that number, second argument will be that number 1, right? Return value will be the some kind of error message, error code, whether it was successfully executed or not, right? Suppose you are creating 4 process means, this variable will be updated with the value 4, this value will be updated by uh, 0, in process 0, 1 in process 1, uh, 2 in process 2, right? So, in this example, uh, this line will be executed all 4 process. Suppose I am creating four process while running this code. The command MPI uh, EXC or MPI run. Right? That you know. MPI run, then number of process, then object code file name. Right? So, next, this line will be executed by all four process. And this line also executed by all four process but in process 0 the number 4 will be received in this variable similarly in process 1 a number 4 will be received in this variable and again already I have told these variables and all like private member for every process so every process they have this integer variable this integer variable so what are the variables declared inside the main will be the private variable for every process individually. So, there will be communicator size in process 0. There will be communicator size in process 1. Right? And second variable also private variable for every process. So, when you run this line communicator rank <coughs> this um, API will be executed by all four process but they will receive Different values. That is the difference. Size they are going to receive 4. 
all the process they will receive 4 and rank first process will receive 0 second process will receive 1 right then we have to verify whether now my rank is 0 or not equal to 0 so we have to verify whether I am process 0 then do this task whether I am process 1 then do this task so that is how we are going to separate the code so now here we are writing uh, my rank not equal to 0 that means other than process 0 right so that code will be executed by 1 2 3 1 process. 2 3 apart that is except process 0 all 3 will do this code and process 0 will execute this code right and also to avoid any conflicts and all um, they will allow any one of the process to do IO operation right so because you have four process if you make all four process to read the data from keyboard it will be something like incorrect data will be received by the process so we restrict the IO operation to only uh, any one of the process usually we take process 0 which is going to do the IO getting input from the keyboard uh, printing the result and all so usually it is known as master process right so we are going to allow process with rank 0 to do the IO operation right now here what we are doing this else code will be executed by which process process with rank 0 so he is going to print what will be this value 0 will be printed and this will be 4 Next, he is going to do MPI receive, right? Going to execute MPI receive. Okay, according to this code, uh, rank process with rank 1, 2, 3 are sending messages to process. Process, here. yes. So, if you want, we can... Uh, Can you understand the code or shall we modify to single two process? Is it okay for you? You have four process. Now in the previous code, process with rank 1, 2, 3 are sending messages to process with rank 0. Process with rank 0. Is, uh, receiving messages from receiving message from one, one two, three. Remaining three. So, so rank uh, process zero will execute the messages parallelly. Yes, concurrently all four okay. processes will be executed. Okay. But uh, process zero is going to execute receive three times because it is point to point communication. For every pair communication, there must be one receive, right? So, uh, meanwhile, suppose you see this code, this one, the process with the rank 1 will execute this MPI send one time, right? What is the destination? In a bottom call destination? 0. So, this line will be executed by process with the rank 0. This line will be executed by process with rank 0. So all four process, process 0, process with rank 1, 2, 3. Now the first part of the code will be executed by these three process. So here one MPI send is done with the destination 0. Here one MPI send will be executed with the destination 0. Here also MPI send with destination 0 because all four are concurrently they are going to execute the code so each will do the MPI send one time so we have three MPI send so the receiver he has to receive the message with the proper MPI receive because it is point to point communication so everyone they are sending with a tag 0 0 
Or three, the destination is zero. And the tag is also zero. Tag is also here, it is uh, not useful because every process they have only one send. But there are two zeros. One is the tag number. One is tag number. Ah. Is the tag number. Another one is the destination. But all three they are using the destination as zero. And they can also have multiple sends. Multiple send. Multiple send also you, they can do. And but, how that single processor will handle all those uh, multiple sends from other processors? Receiver. Uh, receiver. So, it is point to point communication. There must be a pair of communication. One sender and one receiver. receiver. That will be executed. So, the, it is duty of the one of the process. That is master process. It is going to receive message from all, all three. Of, all, all three. So, in this process, the MPI receive will be executed how many times? MPI receives three times. Three times. So here I am using Q equal to one to no one, one, two. One, two, two, three. Up to three. One, two, three. So this is the source ID, source rank. So first time it is one. So first, after the other. first uh, process one will be completed, then, then process two and process three. Because we are specifying this number, I am receiving the message from process one. Because of because here the proper matching must be there. So all three will not be executed parallelly. All four are executing, but when I am executing this MPA receive first time, two equal to zero, one, two equal to one. So it will be matched to this. It will be matched to this one. Meanwhile, other two, they are going to wait on this MPI send. It is blocking um, function call. So they are going to wait on this send until the receiver is ready. Right? So the first time matching will be from process 0. Receive will be matched to process 1 send. So now it is receiving message from this. Meanwhile, other two they are uh, parallelly they are running, but they are waiting on the blocking cell. So next time it will execute MPA uh, receive with a Q equal to two. Next time it is going to execute MPA receive with the Q equal to three. So every time it is matched to this one. Anywhere I didn't mention whether it is blocking or non blocking, right? That MPI send is blocking system call. That name API in a name itself is blocking system call. Non blocking has uh, another name. But in this, I can also make P2 or P3 as uh, ah, they may do the receive operation. Also. Mm. That is the programmer duty to write the code in such a way that uh, uh, we can select the process 3 as master process. Uh, make process 3 to receive message from all other 3. So because we are writing the code uh, based on the rank of the process. Okay. Uh. Now suppose I am going to modify this uh, for loop. What is that wall while you are compiling it now? Uh, minus G these options and all for uh, debugging now. Stop the PPT. Yeah. But it is not. Escape. 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 Escape.
disrupted environment distributed environment so there are two kind of uh, category how the process they are going to interact or threats they are going to interact so the first one is message passing mechanism and another one is you are going to use a shared memory scheme so here mpi comes under the message passing mechanism so mpi stands for message passing interface it is like a additional library uh, included in c programming and fortran c++ etc where they have around 128 uh, apis to perform the inter process communication so based on the communication model now we are seeing this no, no additional software is required right see no. see so to work with the mpi no other additional software is required but it is only limited number of apis but um, even in the uh, earlier version they have only point to point blocking communication now they have added the uh, collective communication again it is also blocking type of thing now they have included the non blocking communication only the communication apis are extended because it is purely message passing mechanism no other additional facilities are there so the message passing may be of kind of synchronous or asynchronous the blocking mechanism is purely based on synchronous communication both the sender and receiver they must be ready to complete the communication in non blocking communication or asynchronous communication uh, sometimes the receiver may not be ready when the sender is sending the data so they are we are going to introduce some kind of wait because no inherent blocking or waiting so we use additional apis to complete the communication in case of non blocking communication and synchronous and asynchronous you have seen so synchronous both must be ready so that the communication will be stop so if the receiver is not ready then sender is uh, waiting on the send api itself if the sender is not ready receiver is waiting on the receive api itself but it is not in the case of asynchronous but here no inherent waiting or blocking but we have to introduce to map or to complete the communication we have to use additional api in case of asynchronous uh, non blocking communication so mpi stands for message passing interface and it is uh, included in c c++ and fortran there is one extended library is there that can be included to use the apis mpi apis synthesis in sagadi you have seen blocking non blocking mechanism you have seen and around 125 functions are there under the categories point to point collective communication and non blocking collective communication and non blocking uh, computation collective computation so only six categories are there so this was a simple program c program this main process will be a single process will be executed now we are going to convert this program into uh, mpi code then we have to include mpi.h header file now here you will get this message only one time single process is created you will get only one time that particular message if you rewrite this program by including mpi.h that header file was included then we are going to execute the communicator size this function already you have seen it is going to get how many process have been created while executing that particular object code right then what is the current process who is running this line who is executing this line that particular process rank will be updated here and now we have seen this example <coughs> Where initially process P zero execute MPI receive 
in the order 2 equal to 1, 2 equal to 2, 2 equal to 3. And meanwhile, other three process they have to execute MPI send one time. So first it will be matched to MPI send executed by process 1. Next it will be matched to MPI send executed by this process. Now I am modifying the code. Uh, Q starts with communicator size minus 1. Q starts with communicator size minus 1. And end up to every time we decrease Q by 1. So it will take Q equal to 3. Then Q equal to 2. Q equal to 1. Right. Now this first uh, MPI receive. This receive the message from. I am using 2 equal to 3 in this receive function. 2 equal to 3. So I am receiving from source process 3. So it is mapped to this one. According to this code. So earlier we have seen the code where this for loop Q varying from 1 to 3. Now I am modifying this. It is varying from 3 to 1. So the, so we have to modify this. It is up to 0, up to 1. I have to modify this. Right? So, this receive will be executed 3 times. But the mapping, first receive will be matched with the process 3. Next receive will be matched with the process 2. Next one will be matched with process 1. So, it is the duty of the programmer. Uh, instead of making process 0 to receive the message from all others, we can allocate the work to some other process. But you have to do the modification in the code level. So if I am going to make process 1 to receive the message from others, then we have to go write the code in such a way that if my rank is 1, I have to execute the receive 3 times. And meanwhile, other process, they are going to execute this part of the code. So other 3 process, they will run this part of the code. So they will execute MPI send separately. So in three process, the MPI send will be executed three times, right? Now the total communication, point to point communication is process zero to one, between zero and one, and between zero and two, between zero and three, right? And here I'm using this parameter. So sometimes instead of using that a variable MPI underscore status. It is one of the wild card characters. We call it as a symbolic name. If you want to ignore the uh, status received, if you want to ignore the status received, we have to use, it is like a symbolic name, we have to use that name as it is. MPI underscore status underscore ignore. Now the uh, status structure is being modified. But we will not worry about the content of that structure, right? That predefined structure. Right? Now, if you run the code, uh, minus two option, you know, to create the object code. It is to uh, do the debugging. If you want, you can have this minus d minus one. It is for debugging purpose. It is to uh, suppose you have some error message in your um, uh, code. In between, it will show the breaking point. That particular point will be blocked. Right? It will do the execution up to that particular line. Then it will throw the error message. Right? So if you want, you can have these options. Or else, you can leave this. And minus O option is to create object code for your C program file. Otherwise, if you leave this option, then usually the object code will be created in a dot out a dot out file name will be the object code right now we are creating our own object code file name this one there i'm going to run the code and in some compiler we have to use mpi run mpi run or else mpi execute right to run the code and now we have to specify a minus n option it a uh, in it, um, it means how many process you are going to create in that MPI uh, program. Then followed by one integer number. It is option, minus n option. Then the number of process to be created. Then followed by 
your object code file name dot slash object code file name. Right? Now suppose I am giving MPA execute the minus n option 1. Then it will create only one process. Now the communicator size will be 1. Process rank will be 0. Yeah. Only one process will be created. And now the send and receive will not have any effect. Right? Send and receive. Because you are creating only one process. And the send and receive will not have any effect. Suppose you are creating uh, EXC minus n option with the 4 object code file name. Now 4 uh, process will be created with the rank 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? And now you will get the message because every process they are going to print what is that uh, print a function they are going to print first my rank my rank then they are going to print the message what have been received right because we are storing the same message one same message will be stored either you can get it from the user from IO device or else you can directly store the message so all of them they are going to print the rank and this line will be executed by process 0 how many times this printer this printer process 0 will execute this printer one time or three times. This line. This line will be executed by process zero only. One time. One time. Right? What is the rank and communicator size? Zero. And this line will be executed. This print up inside the for loop. It will be executed three times. After receiving the first message, it will print the message. Then after receiving this one, it will print. So this message will be printed by process 0 three times. Right? And meanwhile, this message, this message will be printed by process 1 how many times? Process 1. One time. Process 2 also do this one time. Process 3 also do this one time. Right? So, total message you are going to get will be process 1, you will have this message. Process 2, you will have this message. Process 3, you will have this message. Only difference is rank will be different. And similarly, the process 0, it will print the rank and the communicator size. Then the message. Right? So, you will get this message, but anyhow, you will not get this message in this order. We cannot say always uh, process 0 message will be printed first. Process 1 message will be printed first. Because of the availability of core and the scheduling algorithm being used, but four process they will run concurrently. But anyhow, this order will not be always same. Sometimes process 1 will get the CPU and it will do the print first, right? Can you follow this? This MP is sent and received, right? So there must be proper matching between it is point to point communication for every MPI send, there must be corresponding MPI received in other process, in other process not in the same process then the matching will be based on the source id and uh, source rank and the receiver side rank that is one of the matching apart from that the data type that must also be same suppose here i am using character type of data then the receive function i am using integer type of data then it is incompatible data type so you will get error message so the matching will be first based on the source ID, destination ID. Then the data type 
what you are going to use. If I am using character type here, here also it is character type of data. And the buffer size at the receiver side, the buffer size must be uh, normally we use a maximum size. Otherwise, a message part of the message will be discarded. So at the uh, receiver side, we use a larger size buffer area, right? That's what you have seen now. Init function you have seen. Finalize you have seen. In between init and finalize, you have to include all the AMPI APIs. And communication, it is a collection of uh, process. Logically, we provide some name for that particular group. The default name assigned is communicator world. MPA underscore communicator world and rank will be starting from 0 to n minus 1. These functions already you have seen. Now here what will be the output? Suppose I am running this code with the number of process code. What will be the output? All four process they run this code. MPA communicator rank, MPA uh, communicator size and all four will print this because uh, we, there is no separation. If I am process with rank 0, what I have to do? There is no such separation. So all process, four process, they will do this. So this message will be executed by uh, all four process, four times. But the rank will be 0, 1, 2, 3. Size will be always Center MPA, you have seen MPA send. Data types also you have seen, right? Receiver side, it is the additional number MPA underscore status. So now the matching must be such that sender side and receiver side ID must be same. If not, similarly the tag must be same. Then the buffer type, data type must be same. Right? So if all those things are okay, then the corresponding send and receive will be executed successfully. Here process queue execute MPI send which process R execute MPI receive. So in that end up no. process Q is going to send a message for R. So here we have to use the rank R. Here we have to use the rank Q. And the receiver side buffer normally it must be uh, greater of size. We keep it as a maximum size. But anyhow, for proper matching, both the side, the buffer size must be same. But better you can have a larger size buffer at the receiver side. And void card arguments that will be sometimes in the note particular. MPA underscore any underscore source is one of the a uh, wild card argument npa underscore any underscore source now in the previous example what we have used previous example we have one for loop where this process 0 is receiving message from 1 2 3 in this order or else uh, next time modifying the code the process uh, 0 is receiving the message in the order 3 to 1. Now, instead of making this ordering, if we use in place of source ID, from whom I am going to receive, source rank, in place of source rank, we can use this tag MPA underscore any source. Right? Then, this MPA receive 
So I receive the message from any of the three process. Whichever process is ready. No mapping between sender and receiver blank. Because I am using in the MPA receive function, in place of sender rank, I am using MPI any source. So this receive may be mapped to, first one, may be mapped to either this one or this one or this. So it may receive the message in any order. Maybe first it may receive from one or three, then one, then two. Right? But anyhow, the receive function must be executed three times. So that's what this uh, for do. We make this receive function to execute three times. But in place of source ID, end up on the previous example, end up on source zero. Source zero. So it will be mapped to first process one, at the process two, three. Another three, two, one. Now it may receive from any process in any order. Right? So in place of source ID, we are using this one. Similarly, tag. In place of tag, if you want to ignore the tag, then it will not match the tag number at the sender side and receiver side. So in place of tag, we can use this uh, white card symbolic name, mp underscore any tag, in place of tag. So it can be matched to any send function with the tag number 0 or 1, any number. Right? And these two options can be used only in MPA receive function. Right? It can be used MPA any source, MPA any tag. These wildcard options can be used only in MPA receive function. Okay? And another thing, the status argument. So, which is predefined structure, right? The status parameter, predefined structure. And using this also, sometimes after receiving the message, we can get what is the uh, source, that is, what is the source of the message, and what is the size of the message. Because here we have the status field. So I will show the code where this option is being used. How many characters have been received? At the receiver side, we can verify how many, what is the count and how many, what is the type of the data received. Right? So, if you use this option, MPA underscore status, then you use the option, this MPA underscore status member in the receiver side function. Then afterwards, you can run this uh, get count function, MPA get count, it will receive this information from the status field. Status field was updated by the receive function. From that, you can get the count and what is the type of data received. We will show an example afterwards. Right? So far you have seen an IO, as I have already told, the IO is restricted to any one of the process. Getting input or uh, printing the result, usually we uh, allow any one of the process to do the task.
non docking send and receive so the function name will be mpi i send mpi i receive for non blocking send and receive function again it is point to point communication the communication will be between two process only but uh, the communication is non blocking kind the receiver may not be ready while the sender is executing the send function right similarly the sender may not be ready while the receiver is executing receive function so we have to use mpi i send and mpi i receive but anyhow to complete the data communication after executing blocking send or receive we have to run this uh, api mpi underscore wait or mpi underscore test right arguments except the last one the arguments will be same except the last one all other parameters buffer size buffer and size so is how many elements you are going to send data type then rank of the receiver tag number communicator name all are same except the last one where which is a predefined structure mpi underscore request if you want to uh, verify whether that uh, operation is completed then we can use the members of this structure mpa underscore request right which is additional uh, handle used for non-blocking point-to-point -point communication all other parameters will be the same similarly at the receive i receive meant for non-blocking receive function so we have the same parameters except the last one and once you run the non blocking i send or i receive then immediately we have to run this wait or else test right there is another function mpa underscore test okay. so test will have three information Additional testing will be done on this flag, if this flag is set or not, right? It is like you are, um, uh, in process synchronization, we use the test condition or compare and set. Like that, we are, we are repeatedly test for the condition. Until the condition is reached, we are waiting. Like that, it is going to make the process to wait. So, our coding will be same. At the sender side, after MPI send, it is one variable of type uh, the predefined structure, right? Then we have to run MPI underscore wait. This parameter must be passed, and I am going to use MPI status here. No, right? So simply it will make the process if the sender is not yet ready, it is going to make the process to wait. To complete the communication between sender and receiver. So immediately after following MPI I send, we have to execute wait function. Similarly, MPI I receive, we have to execute a wait function. Right? It is, um, we are introducing some kind of blocking uh, in the name of MPI wait. Okay. Now it is two process. MPI rank. Uh, Equal to 1 means it will do this. Not equal to 1 means it will do this part of the code. So equal to 1 it is sending and other process is receiving. So you will get the message. A process 1 is sending and process 0 is receiving. Right. Now it's all about a point to point communication. If you want to execute your code you can do it now. You take 15 minutes time and you run the code. For point to point communication between sender and receiver. Then you move on to blocking communication.
Shutdown deh.
your C programming file name, whatever you are having, then space which is new name dot C. Because the red on file is new name file, you can open it and you modify the content file. No need to type the code again. Use cp command. If I take a copy of that file in another new name. cp command the first one is the original file name. What you are having? Space with a new name for the second uh, program. Then as usual, open it in GI editor and modify. That modification is simple one. Where we are going to modify? Can you modify it? My rank check is done. Yes, it is done. Process with the rank 0. First execute to send. So three times it has to send. To process 1, process 2, process 3. And other process they have to receive the message. So receive must be executed by other process and the send and receive me is swap and eating the phone. Send like a not equal to zero. That's why. Form loop. Form loop. Anga form loop. Anga form loop. Anga send ek form loop. Three times. The final one. Three times. Condition of mother na form loop. So this send must be executed here inside the for loop. So first time destination will be 1. Next time destination will be 2. Next time destination will be 3. That send will be executed here. But destination Q will be the destination process rank. So first time 1, second time run now 2, third time 3. Thank you. 
communication will be done between uh, process, two process process 0 with 1 next the process 1 with the 2 that is how we write the for loop that uh, uh, send or receive will be executed three times uh, matched with the process 1 or process 2 so actually we have run the, in the previous example we have three times execute the receive and the corresponding send right so totally we use uh, uh, 6 APIs. The execution will be 6 times. Now the collective communication will be such that where we are going to do the communication between more than 2 process. Suppose you have created 4 process. All 4 will involve in the communication. So it is like a group communication. So that's why it is named as a collective communication. And no need for the such a tag and all. Message tagging. And all process will communicate uh, with each other. So there are all possible ways. One to all other process. Or all other process to a single process. Or else from many process to a uh, different process. So this kind of communication is possible. One to many. Then many to single process. And all those things uh, collectively more than two process going to be involved. So, it is known as collective communication, right? So, for data movement, 
the major um, thing is broadcast scatter and gather and these three are collective communication but uh, here apart from sending and receiving the data we do some kind of computational work also so it is known as collective computation we do send and that is data communication will be there and in addition to data communication that uh, calculation may be summation or finding max or finding min such calculation also involved so it is known as collective computation right that group so the first one broadcast where we are going to communicate a message from single process to all other right suppose you have created eight process from process 0 we can send one message to all other process so it is similar to your broadcasting any message broadcasting the same kind of message will be received by all other process so in collect, uh, collective communication we have both the type blocking and not blocking first we see the blocking type so broadcast is nothing but a single process will communicate a message to all other right and the thing is the same piece of information the data will be same the same piece of information will be passed to process p1 p2 and p3 here we call this process as root process from which the communication is originated right process p0 is the master process or root from which the message will be broadcast to others. Okay. The parameters for this, the name of the function is MPI V cast V capital letter and the parameters will be first one as like your send and receive buffer, right? Then followed by how many elements you are going to communicate, the count how many elements we are going to communicate then followed by MPA data type then this one is the ID or rank of the source emitter rank that is which process is going to broadcast that process rank will be here then followed by communicator name here well, the thing is we have to specify only the source process ID or the rank right and in case of point to point communication, sender will be using send API, receiver will be using receive API. But in collective communication, both sender and receiver, sender is process 0, other are receiver, but uh, both sender and receiver, they have to execute the same function name bcast. Okay. Right? So at the sender side, it will act as, there is in process with the, rank 0 it act as the send in other process also we run the same api but it will be uh, working as like a receive here no explicit send and receive all the process will use this function b cast but in one process it act as the send process 0 in all other process it will act as the receive right so that's why it is enough to specify who is the root, which is the root of the, the communication. So if I am using process with the rank 0, the root emitter rank is 0. Then in process 0, rank with 0, it act as MPI send. In other process, it will act as MPI receive. Right? So here, one example code I have written. So process we are creating a few process MPI in it and all those things you include. Then I am using a variable k then my rank equal to 0. Then we take some value it may be direct assignment or else you can go for getting input using scanner. So once you get the data for k I am going to broadcast this value to all other process. Then what are the parameters you have to use? Arguments B test Then first one 
it is buffer i'm going to send one integer so it is usually integer variable um, that is uh, pointer type of data must be used here so we use address of k and how many elements you are going to broadcast count is one one integer i am going to broadcast then followed by what is the type mpi underscore in a int mpi data type then followed by now who will act as the source zero zero process so rack is zero followed by the communicator word mpi communicator word now the same line the same function must be executed here the same request will be executed here here also we use the root of the communication that is emitter rank is zero right now if you are running this code with the minus n option four process object code file name mpi run or mpi execute minus n option four with the object code file name then four process will be created and all four process will run the code but uh, this part of the code will be done by zero, which one zero zeroth process. process so it will do this one one time meanwhile this part of the code will be done by all other remaining three process one time so now the mapping will be you no need to put three broadcast here there is the idea no need to put three times it is executing this broadcast one time so it is mapped to broadcast of process zero sorry process one it is also mapped to broadcast of process two it is also mapped to broadcast of process three so once you execute this one it is mapped to broadcast in process one broadcast in process two broadcast in process three so you no need to put three times right so now it is equal to mpi send it is equal to mpi send and here in all other process it is equal to mpi receive right so now they will receive in a data and from k whatever the data available in k that is received here so they can print the value k so here also k equal to 50 will be received here also that value k will be received here also the value k will be received right so here the same function will be used to make the communication among n process not between two process so at the at one point it act as the send at another point it act as the receive so broadcast means in the root process it act as send and in all other process the broadcast function we cast you are going to use but it will act as a receive so how will you map that one from this rank from this rank they come to know that zero is pane for so in process zero it is sender in all other process it is receiving the data right okay ma'am so sometimes we have to broadcast the same message to more than one process then we go for this so here also an example is given where character buffer is created then that buffer is copied with this message string copy function right string copy function the buffer is copied with this message c programming string copy it is c programming function only then it is the message to be broadcast so what you are doing if my only this part of the code is done by which process in a put here not equal to my rank that means what is the rank four not equal to not exclamatory symbol putting like that condition is equal to my rank equal to zero 
that condition is yes. equal unto my rank equal to zero or else you can explicitly write my rank equal to zero then that process will initialize the buffer this line will be executed by the line this line mpi broadcast it is in uh, not inside this uh, if condition, it is executed by all four process. It is executed by all four process, but the source rank is zero. I am using source rank zero. So in process zero, it will act as SN. In other three process, it will act as a here what I am doing, initializing k equal to 0, the k equal to 50 and this broadcast, That's both sentence. are inside the region where my rank equal to 0. But here, yes. so process 0 will do one bcast. Here also this line is placed outside this if condition. So this line will be executed by all four process. Right? This line will be executed by all four process because it is not inside any of the process. So, any on the my rank equal to zero will do only this initialization and this line is not inside any specific process. So, it will be done in all four process. Right? So, in process zero, it will act as send. In process other process, this big cast line will be equal to receive. So, in that case, suppose I am using uh, some other number, 2. 2 put in a number. 2 is broadcasting to others. Apa data initialization yaar no? 2. Process 2. That's why we do this uh, process data initialization in one process. Who is going to send the message? Resource or root process. Also, we do the initialization in process with rank 0 then this line will be executed by all the process including process with rank 0 either you can write in this way or else you can write in this way both are same but the thing is for data communication the broadcast function alone is used right suppose if you are going to use send or receive means how many times you have to execute three times send Three times receive. In different process we do receive. But here we put the broadcast function in all four process. In one process it is equal to send. That itself is matched to other three process broadcast. A single broadcast is matched <coughs> to other three process broadcast. Right? You modify your code whatever you are having and include uh, use broadcast come on this process so take a copy of that one the first broadcast module then we will see another example another uh, you go to another uh, collective function right suppose i no no actually here we need what is the type of argument we need uh, point and variable we need right we need point and variable so it is single dimensional array in C programming uh, what we can actually we need the starting address of the array starting address so we take address of buffer of 0 instead of that we can use uh, in C programming the single dimensional array name itself <coughs> is equal to point base address. base address so direct buffer that's why in greetings previous example we use the array name or else first location order address uh, greetings of zero appa ambassador symbol but anyhow we need one pointer variable in that place so in the address of buffer zero or else uh, simply you can put buffer Array name. Array name itself is a pointer variable in C program. Uh, 
the broadcast to or a code and update panni paathukonga and only you can understand the remaining collective communication so and the code copy pannite you include instead of send and receive you do broadcast